you caught me in my office going through some old scrapbooks. When I was in youth ministry, I took tons of kids to tons of different Christian rock concerts. Like this one, uh, Audio Adrenaline, way back in the day. And then took them to another Audio Adrenaline. And then to my favorite Christian rock band, took some kids to go see Guardian. Uh, here's the one that I'm looking for. Stephen Curtis Chapman back in 1999. And this is a picture backstage with Rhonda and Stephen. And then on the back, uh, that, that was in October, but in uh, June of that same year, Rhonda had seen Stephen at a CD promotion and signing event. And she actually got him to sign a postcard. And I was serving at summer camp. And so uh, later that week when they did mail call, uh, I got a postcard signed from Stephen Curtis Chapman. And, and I'm going through this pile, just kind of being nostalgic because of what happened on Sunday night. As a pastor, you know, I'm either preaching or teaching or, or leading up the worship service or the Bible study. And so even though I'm, I'm in Sunday morning worship, because I'm so focused on my sermon or the order of service, or making sure things go smooth and making sure everything's right. My worship isn't always what it could be and should be. And so I want to encourage you as a pastor to create and carve out and participate in corporate worship where you're there with other brothers and sisters, where you're not on stage, where you're not uh, the leader, where you're not the one preaching or teaching. And so uh, Sunday night, Ron and I got an opportunity to do that. Uh, we went over to Lexington for, um, it was called A Night with Stephen Curtis Chapman. And, and yes, it was a concert, but this was intimate. It was just him and, and, and two other people playing stringed instruments. And uh, yeah, he performed, but there was times during the night where we just worshiped. And, and this large church, this large sanctuary was, was packed with people and, and we're just singing uh, some hymns and singing some worship songs of Stephen's. And it, it was great just to sit um, it, it, with bro brothers and sisters and, and be a part of a church and just to worship. And then last night, uh, I loaded up the church van with some people and we drove to the neighboring town for what's called the Bath County Camp Meeting. And I was just able to sit kind of towards the back of the sanctuary and uh, just to worship again with the church. And I had zero responsibilities. And so not only did I get a worship, I got to sit and listen to uh, one of my, my pastor friends as she preached the message, which was good to be able to sit and, and hear preaching and be a part of, of, of a service. Too many times we as pastors don't take those times. We don't take those opportunities. And it's vital. We're Christians first and foremost. We're, we're pastors somewhere on down the line. But as Christians, we need to, to be in the Word of God. We need to hear the Word of God preached. We need to be a part of corporate worship. We need to be a part of a church setting. We need to be surrounded by brothers and sisters as, as we pray as a body and as we worship as a body. I don't know what that's going to look like for you. I know what it looks like for, for Rhonda and myself. And so Saturday, Sunday night, it looked like sitting with Stephen Kerr's Chapman after all these years and just letting him lead us in worship. It looked like Sunday night, uh, sitting in a, in a church, being fed. It looks like this coming Friday night when I'll take another group over uh, to the last night of the camp meeting. And again, sitting and worshiping and sitting and, and, and being fed by a, a preacher friend of mine as she preaches the word. With eyes wide open, look for opportunities, create opportunities, take those opportunities that are, are afforded to you to worship and to be fed. Hey, I'm gonna get back to reminiscing. How about a little Rebecca St. James? You guys have a great day. I'll see you next time. Love you. Bye-bye.